you know, there's a there's an old saying in, in Arrakis. I know it's on Caladan. There's probably Arrakis too. It goes, "Do me once, sh- shame on Dune. Do me, do me. Can't can't get Dune again." Right. We watched Dune nineteen eighty four times. Literally. Yeah, we did not watch the good one. No. Well, we did. But yeah, we did. No, we're not. But we're talk not about the that. good one. <laughs> right. Right. But right, I'm saying right, right. we've see we we watch the good ones because there's two of them, three because right. this one's also good in a different way, in a much different, in a way. bad way. It's good, and also well, in a good way, it's bad. Bad. In a good yeah. way, it's bad. In a bad way, it's good. Yeah. It's one of the weirdest bad movies I've ever seen. But Sting is in it, and Patrick Stewart has long and hair at times. Odo. Toto does the score. Does the score. David Kyle's Lynch made some of the hardest center. sets of all time. Yep, he did do that. Yeah, um, and that's uh, that's the movie. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next and time. And that's on that's Disney it. Pro. Make sure to check out the Patreon if you want to watch our commentary for this this very film of which we're discussing now. I will say In this: 1984 by David Lynch. Uh, if you have yep. not seen Detune, sure, Dennis sure. the Menace's Detune. Yep. That's his name. Spoilers, because we're going to spoil the end of that movie. Yeah, right. Because the end of that movie is this movie. It is. It's the same story. It's the same story. Sure. Yeah. So if you you care about the book, spoilers, the book, and also Denis Villeneuve Lou's film (laughs) Dune Part (laughs) 2. The Dune. Timothy Targe Chlamydia. Wow. Uh, (laughs) That's his name. So I don't think it it (laughs) might be. I believe it is. Uh, I don't think it might. Be. I think it. Paul Muhadib, uh, right, Uso, Lisan Al Gaib, Wizard, Wizard Hadarak, Quizak Hadarak. Right. Yeah. Oh, he is the Quizak Hadarak. That was a. F- he is Lisan Al Gaib. They don't words. say. Do they say Lisan Al Gaib in? Maybe the, not. This they, I think they I just like they don't hammer home Quizak Hadarak. It's, it's the Quizak Hadarak and the the Muhad, Muhadib. Usul Paul Muhadib Atreides. Right. Which his name is my name too, which makes it really weird for whenever that we go out. Weird. Well, because yeah, like the people are always out, shouting. Yeah, you know? might be yelling or something. Yeah, they're going. There goes Paul Usul Muhadib Atreides. <laughs> Lisan Al Gaib. Anyway, so this movie, how does this start. movie start? How does this movie start, Dalton? So this what movie starts with the movie? Universal logo. Oh, does it? Because it was stars, and we were like, oh, the movie's starting, and then it was right, Universal but it's logo. Not, yeah. And if you're watching the extended version, which we decided not to watch, it starts yes. with weird sketches. Something, yeah, yeah. It's strange. one thing. Anyway, uh, that's not so what this, we're talking this about. This movie though. is Fuck is that. directed by David Lynch. Mm-hmm. You're not a fan of, and I like some don't, of his don't stuff. love him. No, I like David Lynch on a leash. I like David this. Lynch with a yeah. leash is great. I like this. This and is this is my favorite David Lynch thing I've ever seen. Um, this is David Lynch on a leash so, for sure, right. like to a T. Um, the first season of Twin Peaks is David Lynch on a leash. The second season of Twin Peaks, sure. and then the Twin Peaks: The Return is David Lynch just running free down the street, about to get hit by a car. Wish he would, um, but that's neither um, here nor ooh, there. Uh, what what to do about Jack? I think is another David Lynch. Uh, yeah, movie. if you're just going to talk about David Lynch for a while, I'm not. I'm not. Um, Give me a second. I just all right. I'm, I'm all right. Kind of setting yeah. up. I get it. David Lynch on a leash. I understand the idea. Um, this movie is not David Lynch on a leash. This movie is just David Lynch being David Lynch. Or no, this movie is David Lynch on a leash. Yes. Well, it's... he hates it because of that. So we we watched a little bit of the extended cut. David Lynch famously credits this movie as like, number one, it's, it's the stain on his career that he hates. He's he. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. David, this is the stain. (laughs) This is the stain on your career. All right. Uh, It's the least politically acclaimed, acclaimed of his Mm -hmm. movies. Acclaimed. The what? Um, (laughs) Clinically acclaimed. So he, he, he blames it on not getting final cut. So his whole thing is like, I didn't get the final cut of the movie. And I didn't right. get release, to decide what this movie Lynch, was. Release the Lynch cut, yeah. Right. So they released an extended cut of this movie where he was credited as Alan Smithy, which is hilarious. Sure, sure. Um, but you can see the elements. If you're a David Lynch fan, you can see the elements of him throughout this, but it's not a oh, David Lynch it's movie. Ve- yeah, it's very Lynchy, but it's not. 
when when i describe a movie as lynchian this is probably what i'm talking about right yeah like it's the weird visuals the cheap looking special effects it feels like a a david lynch-esque movie that's not a david lynch movie it's sort of otherworldly right well yeah no and i mean i think this is right well this i think this works especially because the you know the weird david lynch gross psychedelic visuals work with the dune story the weird psychedelic witch spice all that shit rolled up into to gross david lynch isms it works really well but restrained enough to not be a studio Just stepped David in and said, yeah. David, this movie has to make Calm sense. Calm down. Like, look, we gave right. you the melting hand. We gave you the guy floating in space. All right, you're going to need to calm down. We gave you the worm mutant people that fly through fold space. That's from the book. Well, that's know, from the book. I'm, sh- yeah. I'm, sh- I'm sure. We the, gave you the what they look like. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, is right. more what I mean. So this movie opens like the it, it opens with narration from the emperor's daughter. It's yeah, Florence Pugh. and it's exposition. It yeah, exposition. this movie is all exposition. Basically, yeah, and I guess that's what happens when you adapt a really long book into one movie, right? And and have to include stuff from the book to make it make sense. Because with some books, like like Jaws is a really long book. And that movie, they're sure. just like, all right, it's a big shark. And then they threw it's the book shark. away and it's, just did the And there thing. there is Brody and there is and they are on the boat and they it's the and he goes, That's the thing about they got white eyes like a doll's eyes. Which from what Don't I understand seem to be living at all. <laughs> from what I understand, the, bite the, you. Her the eyes version roll of Dune, over my yeah version of jaws are you doing jaws right now (laughs) from what i understand the version of dune that was supposed to come before this which was uh, hordorowski's dune was more like that like they threw out most of the book stuff and then just made this and it was just whatever sure um and and david lynch didn't want to do that so so he's directing the book pretty pretty straightforward and there's a lot of just exposition dump. The whole opening two minutes, exposition dump. Mm-hmm. Then we cut to another scene thinking we're done with exposition dump, more exposition dump. That ends, we go to the the Emperor's Chambers and it's a sick looking shot and it's it's awesome. And, and it's we'll talk about that in a little bit. Dump. And it's exposition dump. And then we jump to Paul Atreides and we get more exposition and dump. And now we're finally in the movie. dump. <laughs> Right, like like it it took fifteen minutes for the movie to start yeah. before we're out of exposition. What saved that entirely is that it looks so cool. It Everything looks, looks so great. Cool. Even Everything though it looks it's you know, I don't care about the stuff that they're talking about or thinking, narrating about, whatever. It looks it looks awesome. The sets are great. It sounds great. Lovely Toto uh, score. Yes, it's the um, doom, doom, right. It goes Dune. Uh, great sets, great costumes. Kyle McCockiner is in it, and he looks cool. <laughs> That's his he name. Does look, he, he has his an name Uncle he Barry. Does look, he does look cool. Yeah, he's got an Uncle Barry. And um, uh, Joe Rogan, uh, Thanos. Uh-huh. Um, uh, Joseph Brolin. <laughs> Joe Brolin. Josh, Joshua <laughs> Joshua Brolin. Uh Josh Brolin walks in, but instead of being Josh Brolin, he's Patrick Stewart. Right. And he's and he carrying his liar. His little liar yeah. or whatever. Should which he call plays a liar. in the second movie, but not in the first movie. Mm-hmm. Um because yeah. that's a thing from the book. Anyway, sure. and so they do the fight and the shields come out. And the oh, shields are. Oh boy, just... the shields. I almost forgot can't uh yeah so the shields are bad every every good thing i've said about the cool visual style and and good high quality visuals is gone and the opposite can be said for for these shields they look decent for they 84. look i'm sure but they look stupid also they also look ridiculously Dumb. sure but for 1984 i and i don't They're mean like so the design the design any... is still dumb but the, yeah, effect the actual is effect good is, for 84 it's fine for 84 
It's it's, it's better it's than worse. half of the effects in this movie. Sure, yeah. I was gonna say it's worse than half of the effects. So both Which, are true. If we're at half, yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Um, but yeah, so for anyone who hasn't seen this movie that for some reason is watching this look it discussion, up discussion, thanks. Clip. Look it up. But it's I mean it's it's I I really I can't describe it. They're it's, in cardboard boxes that are slightly transparent. Cardboard boxes that are transparent. It looks like plexiglass weird yeah like roblox plexiglass it's it's it looks like roblox that's what it It, is it looks like roblox life is roblox if you've made it to this point in the episode i want you to go ahead and hit that share button really quickly yep yep like and subscribe while you're down there ring the bell uh who we share who who are our fan all our loyal subscriber fans sharing with this time i think today i want you to send this specifically to your boss Whoever your boss okay. is, I want you to send this to your boss with no context. I want you to just share it, text it to your one. boss. Um, and now, would if you they send like this it, to your boss? No. Oh. <laughs> but right. I want them but to. Do as I say, not as I do, right? Right. <laughs> that's, also, why, that's, why, that's how the saying goes. Look, here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. If your boss mm-hmm. likes it, you could get a raise. If your sure. boss hates it, you could get fired. You're gambling. Now you right. have a chance to gamble. So right. Just go ahead and like send gam- this to your gambling. Boss. And the thing about gambling is you can always win. Because most of the time. Say, say you get a raise. No, always. Say you get a raise. Boom. Now you have more money to go to the casino and gamble. Right. You get fired. Okay. Severance package. You get and fired. You, also, you get on welfare and unemployment. Use that money to gamble. Well, I was going to say you get fired. You it. get another job. You send this video to your next boss. Right. Eventually, you'll have a boss who likes it and gives you a raise. Yeah, and just keep doing that, and also keep gambling at the keep. Just keep gamble all your money, right? You can Anybody else we want our we want our, our our friends to send this to? Um, I'd say maybe um your uh if you have if you have a teacher like a like a high school teacher that mm. that you were like close with that you like maybe like like follow on like social media, like on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, like for whatever, like any, any, any teacher past teacher or maybe current teacher, maybe you're, you know, you're in high school listening to this, whatever. Um, yeah. Just like a chill teacher. Them. Chill yeah. teacher that you have on social media, send it to them. I think they like it. Um, That's a good one. Um, Also, like we said last week, go ahead and trap a cockroach in a cup and put the video on for them. If you're listening on Spotify or iTunes, we have video of this available on YouTube. Next time you're in a public bathroom, Mm. if you have a a pen or a Sharpie, uh, which if you're listening to this right now and you're at home and you plan on maybe being out, at some point where you think you'd have to be in a public bathroom, grab a Sharpie, just pop it in your, it in in your, your pocket, pocket your, your purse, your butt, whatever, wherever you keep Sharpies, you know, I don't judge. Keep it in your car uh, so that when you have to yeah. pee and you stop, it's there. Right. And uh, just write, you know, listen to the semi-pro film show on the, the thing. Maybe add a little joke, a little drawing, mm, a little whatever joke, you want to add. Take, take a picture of that. Um, Draw the logo. Draw the semi pro draw logo. Draw the logo. Yeah. Or just draw something else. Maybe just draw like a little penis or. or right. That's what you do in bathrooms, or, right? I mean, that's what you gotta, right? Uh, all right. I, you don't yeah, have that was good. to. That Maybe was good. draw a Ninja Turtle. All right. But yeah, we do. So, we very much appreciate you sharing this. Thank with you to everyone. You liking the video. Um, all of those yeah. things. That helps us out Thanks a ton. Thanks to everyone who's right. listening. Um, you know, and the Patreon. You. Patreon. Yep. Patreon.com Check that out. Pro. Yeah. All right. Now back uh, to the movie. What, one dollar. The oh the 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 box Roblox um those just right. busted out. Um, yeah. So that's that happens. It's the scene from Dune one where they fight, and then he says, "I got Which you." Oh, but I also from got the first you. First half of this movie are from Dune. Right. One. Yeah. Um, except for the space travel. Um, right, which they drop, but we're not there yeah. yet. No, we almost are. So it's it's okay. Yeah, they're the, the, uh, the 
because no right, man has ever box. been tempted by the box. Yeah, but so it's the Atreides are going to the Arrakis, and also Paul has been groomed and bred to be the Quizak Hadarak. Right. Um, well, and, and the thing the thing on Atreides is, to... if you're not aware for whatever reason, um, mm. there's a there's a group of people called the Harkonnens, or in this movie they say the Harkonnens, or no, sure. maybe it's the new movie where they say the Harkonnens. Anyway, I don't care. Harkonnens, doesn't matter. Harkonnens, ho, ho, ho. They're, they're on this planet. They've been controlling the production of spice, which mm-hmm. is a super important thing for the universe for, it's, for like it's 80 oil. years. It's oil, and it gets it's you It's oil. High. It it travel. It helps space travel. It helps space travel, and it gets you high. It helps them high. travel, so. but yeah, it also gets you high. And so the Harkonnens are being kicked off the planet right, Just like the oil, emperor. you know? And this movie, they say that it's because the emperor... Um, he's scared of the new sound weapon yes, that the Atreides are working on. Scared of the yeah, which, which is, is made up for this also, movie, which is fine. Which is also the weirding way, right? The weirding part, way, a, which are a part of the weirding way, right? Because which in whatever. the movie, the weirding way, or in the movie in the book, the weirding way is just a style of fighting, it's a fighting thing, yeah. Uh, and in this, this it's, it's, it, in this, it's that, and also this weird sound weapon, which is cool. That, that's fine. Yeah, that's whatever. Who cares? It's sure. um, but yeah. So the emperor to as a plot to destroy the right Christopher uh, Atreides, Walken. He's, right? He's Christopher not Walken. Christopher Walken. This guy does no, a really good yet. job as emperor, though. He's yeah, he's fun. I mean, he's no Christopher Walken here, but he's right. Walken here. Um, they yeah they <laughs> <laughs> the emperor decides to send the Atreides family to Arrakis and kick off. Well, because the there's a there, well because there's a saying in Arrakis. I know it's in Caladan. It's probably in Arrakis right. too. I mean, Dune me once, <laughs> shame on you. Dune me can't get Dune again. Right. Right. I think it's Dune mm-hmm. Me Once, Shame on Dune. Dune Me. Or, uh, well, uh, I've heard it. I've heard it both ways. Right. I've heard it both right. Dunes. I've Duned it both. <laughs> um. So, yeah. So, but Paul is having weird visions and dreams, and they're yes. super trippy and cool in this movie. Yeah, they're dope. Very, very cool and psychedelic and weird. Very Lynchian. He's like floating in space, and there's a hand and shit. And it's right. Lots of hands. There's all, a lot the of hands. Moon, you see a little drip. Drip, and the drip moon, the water, which is whatever drip, a lot of dripping in water. Um, a lot of shit. but yeah, so so the Reverend Mother who heard the Emperor talking about Paul to the Spacing Guild at the beginning of the movie decides to go pay Paul right, a visit right. and make him face the box because no man has ever been tempted by the box. Right. What's in the box? Well, no man's ever been tempted by a box. Right. I know I certainly haven't. No man has ever been tempted by no a man, box. No man no man has ever been tempted by a box. Um but what's Yo, in the box? Comment down below if you're a man that's been tempted by the box. Hey, <laughs> put hey, your hand in the box. Hey, don't put your hand in the box. What's, what's in the in box? The bo- your, your hand. hand. <laughs> so Paul the so he puts, puts his, his hand, hand in, in the box. box and unlike Denis Velavoon's dune, Denis you Velavoon, actually see it. He sees it and it's cool. It's dope. It's I, I, his so hand I melting and it's I, until after I saw this, I was like, "Oh, they don't show that in the new one, but they right. do." Do they not? Do they really? Well, sort they of. Really it's, it's just like it. in his pain, he gets like this vision of a charge. Oh, there's like flashes, right? Yeah. yeah. But anyway, they show the flesh way, melting this off one's of cool. this one. It's melting and it's, it's grotesque and it's weird. You can it's like an acid looking burn. Real cool. Um, uh, and then they say no woman has ever survived that much pain. She's never right. survived that much gum jabbar. Yeah. Because the gum jabbar is a that little j- needle at the neck. That j- Yo, that jabbar gum, you know what I'm saying? Uh, who up 12 a.m. Jama Naked Bar? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> but that happens. Then the Duncan next thing Idaho happens. is there. Duncan he Idaho, looks he looks like he'd do your taxes. He's and he's like, some, hey, I'm Duncan some Idaho. Stupid looking. He doesn't idiot. matter in this movie he's at all. They should have. Yeah. Legitimately, for the sake of the plot, they should have cut him entirely. Right. Do they now, you show can't, his death? They did. Uh, I don't even remember. The problem <laughs> is, if there's even a slight chance of a sequel, you can't cut right. Duncan Idaho. Gotta, yeah. Um, and so he's so, there, and then he dies at some point. But And whatever. then we meet uh, Duke Leto Atreides, who yeah, is Willem, Willem Dafoe, Dafoe. But with a beard. Beard him Dafoe. No, probably Willem not. Willem Beard. Fortnite. 
Right. <laughs> Uh, and then we go to Arrakis, the lighthouse, and then we're on Arrakis. And no, but we before that we go into the big ship that makes the little ships go to the new place, right? Then the the big mutant worm people fold space because they're high on that spice, right? And that's how it works. And it's not really explained, but it is in the books. And it's like they yeah, take and spice, and then they can point at one planet and point at another planet, and suddenly there's a bridge between the two planets. Yeah, because. Sure. Why, why not? not? It's uh, like yeah. so much other weird stuff happens. Why wouldn't that be happening? Right. So that happens. And then boom, new planet, Arrakis. And then they're there. And then Kyle Muhadim gets uh, his little little bug thing. Doesn't look like a bug in this one, but right. it was a bug in the new one. It's just like a little syringe in this that flies. And, and he it, thinks the whole time. Yeah. Oh, he's so so much thinking, so much expositional thought. Is this a good time to talk about the expositional thinking? I th- it's as good as as good a time as any. Yeah. It's the, easily so, the worst part of this movie, and I love this. Yeah. Movie. Well, there's there's so much because it so it's, often. It, they they this movie is two hours long, and it is an adaptation of a long ass book that when adapted well and properly was six hours between two movies. So, um, you know, to make up for that, there's just, just a whole Lots lot of, of yap, whole lot of yapping, but and it's not yapping. They're just thinking about their yapping. And look, it's you know? over the course of the time that they've, they've made three adaptations of Dune. There's this movie, mm-hmm. there's the sci-fi miniseries, and then there's a the new set of movies. Each one yeah. has gotten longer than the last, and rightfully so, because that book is dense. I right. mean, we're probably talking an hour and a half plus an hour and a half is three hours. We're probably talking four and a half hours for the sci-fi miniseries. So it's like right. you have you have two hours, four and a half hours. Now we're at six hours and it's like each time it's like, okay, this feels justified. Like we need more time. Yeah. But the solution to that in this, when David Lynch read the book and adapted the screenplay, and I would assume this is in the screenplay, his solution to fix that was, I mean, it's, it's every other scene is just whatever character needs to, to have something explained what's happening. It's just, think it they think about what's and happening sometimes it's, it's oh i i am on arrakis yeah like sometimes it's obvious it's okay i i just saw that or i can tell that's happening that's a but sandworm I mean, and it's just coming right. from his mind and i'm like this yeah. is not necessary but here. a lot we, of a lot of the time like, do we we don't need to know what the name is. of the sandworm is right and also it doesn't need to be mentally monologued like that like it can just be like like oh this this doctor science whatever guy can just be like oh that's a sandworm right or, it's definitely the lazy Oscar way Defoe can just be like oh what's that is that a sandworm yeah it is good eye which is a right line from this that they say also <sighs> but so, we're yeah. arrakis arrakis we meet the attackist Ooh, we meet the maid right she yeah. dies pretty quick I mean, it's it's whatever. She's one of the like fortune tellers. Like, oh, she believes in Muad'Dib, yeah, or whatever is Fremen. Lisan al Gaib. Lisan al Gaib. Kuzak Kuzak Haderach. Kuzak Haderach is the is the Ben Jezreel. Ben Jezreel, yeah. Um, and so whatever, dude. I don't give a fuck. And the splot, the it's the, splot, the bad guy from the Star Wars. The what? The splot kind of speeds along even... at this point because oh, it like. It, if you look at the first movie, this is the chunk of it. Like this is the middle yeah. chunk of the movie, and it's like the quickest part of this one, which is makes sense. Sure, it's yeah. it's the least important. Them establishing what life on Arrakis is like is the least important part of the overall story, right? Um, so they don't do any of that. They, they, yeah, I mean, they, they just they blaze, gloss it. They they blaze through the whole whole attack. Uh, you know, attack on Arrakis from the the Harkonnens or Harkonnens, whatever. There's the little bug thing. The maid dies. the The doctor betrays him and tells uh, tells Leto his plan. After after he dies or doesn't almost dies, gives him the poison tooth. 
Uh, spoiler alert, it doesn't work in this either, but uh, but for a different reason. Um, but then something else happens. Oh, I guess uh, I guess Paul and his mom get captured because then they're they're on the uh, they're on the ship and it's the you know it's the same damn mayfly in my room. It's the scene from uh, from you know Dune where there's the voice. He uses the voice. He's not very good at it, but he's good enough to get his mom's voice thing right. voice blocker off, and then she uses it to kill the, their their attackers. Their and and captors, this whole whatever. time, it, they they do stretch the plot a little bit here, because the whole time we're jumping back to Giddy Prime, which is the right, Harkonnens yes, planet. Yeah. It's the sickest set design in the Getty whole movie. Getty Prime is dope, yeah. You can tell it's where David Lynch was having the most fun designing. Right. Because the so, sets, we haven't really, we've talked about how much we like the sets. The sets are so good. They're Yeah, they're they're very unique and they're very good at at showing, like, what they're meant to represent. Like the, right. The, the Caladan the, is the very Caladan organic. one is super, yeah, it's super, this, this very cool, organic, natural, a lot of natural lighting and wood and and all that all that shit but it's still you know fancy looking and cool and then it's this this cold industrial steel oh, and getty dude. prime cold it's just is the best super way to describe dark. it yeah um yeah, it cold and we meet the baron uh, and yeah, he's disgusting he's, he's grotesque and horrible and he floats and it's very point, funny he starts like sweating oil mm. which might be yeah. from the book maybe who knows or that's uh, he just starts like Lynch. sweating oil but he's, he sweats the oil and he's he this is when he's floating and he's he pulls that dude's the little guy's blood dude. pump thing but i don't know it's just weird dude yeah but, and then we meet we meet dave batista and elvis yes dave batista, dave batista and batista elvis played by somebody who knows and elvis played who knows? By he says like two words and sting is fade whatever fade he's the important one yeah. yeah he's the cool one um yeah so we meet them we meet the doctor the baron starts floating mm -hmm. this actor who whatever his name is i wish i could oh. remember his name so i can give him who, credit who knows um, the actor who plays baron harkonnen is he knows what movie he's in <laughs> right no one else knows he knows yeah, he's in this Dune is 84. this is this is a completely different version. And we said this when watching. It's a completely different version than Stellan Skarsgård's Baron, which is and awesome it may and not be equally as good, but it's it's no, but it's more fun. So much more fun, and like it's, I don't. It's indescribable. It is equally really. as wild. enjoyable to watch. Absolutely, yeah. For completely different reasons. Absolutely, I'm not. I don't feel scared of him. Which I know no. I'm supposed to. But right. He no, is... he's just <clears throat> he's a funny he's a funny little monster. It's like everybody little. else who's like <laughs> he's a great big monster. You know, uh Kyle McCoughlin was in this and he's like, Okay, I'm gonna mm -hmm. be the greatest live action version of Paul Atreides to ever live. You're not gonna be. This guy was like, sure. I know I'm not going to be the greatest version of the Baron Harkonnen right. to ever live. But I'm going to be the most me version of it. But I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm going to make mine stand out. Yeah. And you know? boy, was he. Yes. And he's great. And I, that's my favorite part of the movie, I think. And it's great. And it's good. He's awesome. Um, But we're back in Arrakis. Then, uh, Arrakis. Yep. And so, uh, Paul and his Paul mother. And Paul and Lady and Jessica escape. Because yeah, of well, the voice. Yes, of the voice. Uh, she is almost raped. Yep, very rapey. Which I think um, she is almost raped in both the book and the new movie as well. Probably, yeah. I think it's... It's, it's at least yeah. implied. It's right. one of those things, like, if you know, you know, you know? Right. 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 Um, um, so Paul flies so, the ship. They crash in the desert. Dune, yeah, and then Dune they fall, ensues. They fall, they fall into the, the Fremen place and then they're just there and then it's the scene from the end of, of and they're the automatically in the south but they, yes that's right they're and automatically worm, in the south there's a worm chasing them there's a worm chasing them it's it very quickly speed runs the right. end of dune part one and, and two and, and the like the very middle beginning chunk of, two? of yeah the very beginning to middle chunk of 
Dune Part Two, and where he's there's a part you might remember from instantly part two. accepted into the the Fremen yes. and given and, his and his Mubadid or Usul name. And also he's, one one of the things they in, cut he's locked in. One of the things mm-hmm. they cut. There's this idea that like oh he the the Fremen are exist in like different tribes, and right, so people right. always and think he, like oh there's only a few Fremen. But there's actually millions, mm. and they just speed run that by saying all of the Fremen are together. They're all just here, yeah. Which is fine. They're, they're all it's... in this one place where you happen to land in the south. And I will say this: I, I genuinely, I'll say this: the stuff mm. that they cut to make to make time, they cut the right stuff. Sure, sure. They did yeah. a really good as far as they knew taking they knew what as, to cut and it worked, yeah. As far as taking something as dense as Dune and condensing it down, they did a really good job. Right. Yeah. And I think the like little things like that, like, okay, we're gonna cut all of the tribes and make it one big tribe of Fremen. Great idea. Mm-hmm. Uh is cutting the, sure, the training yeah. montage where where Paul learns to how to sand walk, cut that. Right, like let's let's streamline right. Cut sand this walking as a whole. Yeah, right. Don't just don't do it. They did show the scene that the new movie cut, interestingly enough, where mm. Paul and Lady Jessica are chased by a worm on their way to the Fremen, and we see the scale mm, of the right. worm, and that's important. Right, big worm, but not the biggest worm, because the biggest worm will come later. I'm the biggest worm. But yeah, we see like a montage of Paul training the the yeah, other he, fremen he, and yeah, he's, he's, yeah yeah he's doing cool stuff silly scene he she and then he she shows him the his weird sound gun thing and he used it to destroy a rock right. it's a big pyramid uh, rock fucking stupid and funny and that's great he said kick it and then the guy yeah he says kick it beat it yell at it <laughs> and then the guy just goes break <laughs> yeah uh, and it's uh, set up, and, it, set and up then for his and then deep powers. There's dialogue because the whole movie we yes. forgot to mention this. The movie's narrated by the emperor's daughter, right? Yeah, and it only as happens well, like three times well in the as, whole movie, as well as being narrated by, by everyone else, everyone <laughs> that's thinking ever. Yeah, um, yeah. So then there's a thing where the emperor, and I think the book is narrated by the emperor's daughter. It's been Probably, a minute since I've read the first Dune book. I read I read the rest of them much more recently. Sure, um, sure, yeah, readings for nerds, but yeah, right. Um, what are you a nerd? You read. You know how to <laughs> right. read. You know how to read. Look, for the last time, I know how to read and write. I just don't like to read and write. Okay. Um, but no. So then it it just basically like plot jumps and it's like okay, we're two years in the future. It's right. it's yeah. it's two years. He's been training oh, with him, whatever. Um, and then uh, Paul says. I've got Lady one more thing Lady to do. Lady Jessica drank the water and it right. woke up and pre-birthed her, her daughter, um, Paul's sister. Yes, Alia. Um, and Alia, Alia, yeah. And then, she, then, yeah, jumped two years and she's two years old, but also and maybe no, super... none of that is explained. <coughs> in the new right. movie, you're like, oh, yes, the, the <coughs> water of life, the juice. It's okay, the, she it's gave the, the juice of the sandworm. Of the it makes whatever. sense. And the conscious sure. and whatever. They don't explain any of that in this movie. No, it just kind of happens. But yeah, it just who happens. cares? It's Why like not? we it had to happen, so it happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it did have to happen. Uh, it's part of the story. And it, and it did have to happen, and it did happen. Yeah, that's true. All right. those things. And, and I guess if, if you don't know Dune, it doesn't matter what the water of life is. It only matters right. to those of us who know Dune. Um, but anyway, so we jump two years into the future and Paul basically at this moment decides he's got to drink the water of life himself. His sister has been born. Mm. He's been training with a Fremen. He's got two things left to do. He's got to ride the Shalud. Right. Uh, what is it? Shalud. The Sh- Shai Halud, I think. Uh, Shai, Shai Halud. Halud. Yeah. He's yeah. got to ride the Shai Halud and he has to drink the water of life. So he rides the sandworm. And yep. they do a. This is what we were talking about earlier. They do mm, yeah. such an Great amazing job. Of job. Scale. It looks yeah, I mean, incredible. Even, like I didn't even like I. Other than the fact that they said, "Oh, that's the biggest sandworm ever." The biggest ever. one that's, that's ever been that's called. That's the legendary giant sandworm. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't have known that. I would have been like, "Oh, it's another big ass fucking sandworm." <laughs> But in this but, one, it like like you can tell it really shows that this and, is the biggest sandworm. Ever. The yeah. the practical effects in this movie 
are oh, so, so good. cool. Yeah. And the the thing that the only thing with the effects in this movie that I'm like, man, this dates it is the compositing. So the sure. green screen, the yeah. chroma key never looks good. There's always a little black rim around everyone who does anything. Right. But the 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 miniatures and the practical but, yeah, sandworms, the, the miniatures like, and the yeah, the practical sandworms are awesome. Like it, it really is a shame that we'll never see that again. Right in any version of Dune, ah, well, you think Denny Villeneuve is going to do it? And yeah, you think they're going to make sure. a different version of Dune after his trilogy's done in oh, like my. soon in twenty years? Right, and yeah. in twenty years, there are no mo- movies won't we'll even have real actors, right? You know, we'll all be AI. Yeah. Um, so it is nice to see a practical right. standworm. It's nice to see little miniatures. Getty Prime being and a miniature, it looks very good. So too. Good. everything in this movie, other than the compositing, right. looks it great. Looks good, yeah. Um. And then after that, he he wakes up in a in a cold sweat with uh, Chani next to him, and we're going to talk about her character. I think at the end, right. I want to save that. In it. That's I, about yeah. It, I want to so save the say. changes they made to her in the new movies right. towards the end. She's no Zendaya, you know. Um, but yeah, he wakes up and he's like, "Hey, I've got to drink the water of life," and she's like, "Okay." And so they go and they her, tie him her. up. In the yeah, desert. they just tie him up in the middle of the desert, and then he just which is drinks weird. It. Every version Strange, of this, but... every version of Dune that's been done has done that way differently. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. in in the the newest one is the only one where Chani really doesn't just... give it to him. Mm. Um, it, but in this one, it's just they literally tie him up in the middle of the desert and lay him down. In the in the sci fi miniseries, they do it in the temple. And right. so they, that's where they give it to him. In the newest version, he does it himself. And then Chani comes later and like wakes him up. Right. They don't do any of that here. It's just he's in the desert and he's, then he wakes up the and he and sees he the moon the and he moon, sees the future. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Right. Future. Whatever. Who cares? Yeah. And it he's Paul Moore Deeb. He's the future. He's Paul Moore Deeb. And this is, when he, he, this is when he hatches his plan, which makes sense. Yep. He can see the future now, so he hatches his plan. He he, the emperor is on his way to Arrakis, and the emperor is coming to Arrakis because Paul and the Fremen have put spice production in an absolute halt. They've stopped mm-hmm. all spice production. They've just spice been is necessary shit up for the last two years. Yeah, uh, spice is number one. It sells a lot. They say in this movie, they they mention right, that they money. sell a lot of spice. And also, it's necessary for intergalactic space travel. So without spice, yeah, there is no travel space. Um, so they, the Emperor decides to come to Arrakis to see what's up and talk to the Baron. So he gets to Arrakis. Uh, he lands, and Paul is hatching his plan. They use the atomics, or the nukes, they use the atomics to, to break down the barrier between where... Right, um, it's the nuke from Oppenheimer. It's just it, a yes. It's a literally little just crumbles. little stuff, tiny some stuff crumble. Wall crumbles, yeah. Um, but then, yeah, cool, good. And then they ride right. the worms into where the emperor right. is at. Worms. Um, but instead of it's a little different in this. Instead of the emperor being in the room with Paul and the rest of the Fremen, they send right. Alia in. And she's she's she looks like three or four, maybe four or five, probably four or five. Yeah, she looks four to five, but she speaks like a grown woman. So they ADR'd mm-hmm. her. I kind of like it. If it's I'm being honest, interesting. It's weird. It's fine. I think it's probably how they did it in the book. Maybe I don't. I don't. That's know. what but it, it feels like. Yeah, um, it's it's strange and it's yeah it's which happening. is fine i'm all for strange and dune right yeah the tune? Dune. did 1984 and... no um but yeah so she does that and she's there and then she pulls the she's the, she pulls the gamja bar the... on the baron yeah and stabs and him in the neck and then pulls all of his cords out him into space and then she like she blows up a wall with the yeah, weird way, just goes just goes flying out. Yeah, I guess he flies out, and if that wasn't enough, he flies into the mouth of a sandworm. Right. Yeah. And there, yeah. And so, so there's a battle going he, on. We forgot sucked. to mention that Gurney, aka Patrick Stewart, is back. Right. With Patrick the... Stewart showed back up with his dope long hair, but he's oh, still got male pattern yes. baldness. It's he awesome. It's, it's hilarious. Awesome. He's it's bald. Great. He's got a cul-de-sac in the middle, 
but it's yeah, long like a mullet. Long, long ass mullet hair. It's great. Call that a mare pattern bullet. I won't, but you can if you want. Mare patterned bullet. <laughs> yeah, I heard it. No, I got it. Um, so that's happening. He's there. Then Paul yeah. Muhadib shows up. He's on the worm and, with him. And fights he up. He up. He, he up. up. Emperor broke. No, he up. Uh, well, yes, but also he up to Baron a broke in his worm. Right. right. His worm. He regal- he's he's shying his halud. Halud. <laughs> <laughs> he up watering so, his life. Yeah. Hey, so yeah, he he up quizacking his hatterack. He moved deeps all over the place, and then yep. um, he fights with Sting, and Sting. he does fight with Sting, and they don't really set it up well. No, just kind of happens. It does. He just, very much. he just says, "Hey, give the Harkonnen a knife. I will fight him." They don't even say why. No, like in the new one and probably the book, it was he was fighting on behalf of the emperor who. Right. He who was Paul fighting. He was trying to fight. Yeah, he was fighting for the throne. Right. May your may thy knife chip and may shatter. May thy knife chip and shatter, which is hard as hell. <laughs> that's like, that's a, bar. a bar, dude. That goes crazy. And they don't even say it in this movie. David Lynch wouldn't know a bar if it bit him in the bar. Might, but I mean, it's a bar about a bar. Well, what do I know? I mean, it's not a joke, it's just a bar, but anyway, Shut up. um, yeah, it's See? not really set up the sting fight. It's almost it's one of those things, it's what they did in the book, so they got to do it in the movie, right? Um, so that happens. He he kills Sting, kills Sting. It's way lamer and less climactic oh, yeah. than the new one. But, yeah, that's because the new cool one is like all... one of the coolest fights in cinema. Right. Um, yeah. It's the fight in the new one is so good, it's, dude. It's cracked. Yeah. Like ah, uh, uh, it's less cool than this one, which Much which less, is to be yeah. expected, which of course, because it's yeah. Um, and so dude, then Paul before. Paul uses the voice. And it cracks the earth open. He, yeah, this is where uh, things say, he does the cool. He does the cool thing where he he stabs him right through the, the throat, cool, yeah. and it goes oh, through, like through his mouth. That his was, mouth. You yeah. see the knife in his mouth. Yeah, and then he he uses the voice on him. He yells the whatever they're like the Fremen like war chant is, and it like you know it it, cracks. it shatters the earth it open. Shatters the ground. Oh, we also established that uh, that them. Saying Muhadib with the the, right. the weirding way gun worked as that's one of the weapon words. And he says it's, that he says my name is yeah, a weapon. My name is a weapon. It's like all right, cool. I we got it. it. All right, I got it. I saw it. it. I saw we get it. it. You don't like Jesus, I Frank Herbert. We get it. <laughs> right. Um, uh, but yeah, so he uses the voice. It cracks and shatters the earth open. Right, which is a big moment. Shatters, which yeah. is when um. And then uh, it's raining. Which is when Alia says, Did you see? How could he do this? Right. For he, he is, is the Quizakara. Which is the yes. only way I can remember that name. It's the only one of the Messiah yeah. names I can remember. And it's because, For he is the Quizakara. Is burnt into my name, in my brain. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then that's. And then, yeah, and then he it, yells something and... else and it starts raining. Yeah. And. Which is the end. Yep. That's and the end and, of the and movie. look, that's uh, people. People dumb have a big problem with that. Dune fans, yeah, in particular, right. it works for this movie. Sure, I guess it's it still... works for a standalone Dune plot. It works in that, that this doesn't movie continue dumb and bare minimum. Sure, yes. I more mean it works for a Dune plot that doesn't continue. Right. Well, I mean, I'm I'm speaking as someone who knows nothing of outside of this specific sure. Dune storyline. But you know, it continues. Like, I don't know if it's sure, but I don't know when it starts raining on Arrakis, if it ever. Never does really. Sure. I think maybe Leto the Second makes it uh habitable right well he was a giant worm so right. but uh, the, the I mean, you know if you're a giant like, worm you can shit, you can do anything you know? the only thing with that where i'm like they could have done a better job setting that up is had they set up the idea that like he was supposed to make arrakis like habitable right, right. again yeah because the mean, thing with arrakis yeah. that they don't really go into in this movie is arrakis was at one point 
luscious mm-hmm. and habitable. Yeah. And then over time of with the with the mining of the spice and all that kind of stuff. Right. With the mining and the spicing and the spicing and the mining. Over yeah. ten thousand years the planet became mm-hmm. completely inhabitable. That's why the the Fremen feel like such an oppressed people group is because people group yeah their 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 habitat their planet their whatever their has, doom has been yeah has been mi- their their iraq as their dune has been mined into right into nothing into, into nothing, a desert yeah, into um, desolate and nonsense, i don't think any nothing. of the movies really hammer that idea home well no, this one does on it, it real the, bad the, the villeneuve ones but but even then like it's not like it's not a focus like it's just right. it's like a one off thing they say in the first one which it's it's the reason that you know the the it's the reason that the the yeah, I mean, Paul yeah, is, a, is important is to right. reverse that um for them not for him but anyway the mm. the movie ends yeah, he, he gets he gets, he gets the emperor robe it's, put on him and gets, then it cuts yeah. to credits and it was good i like Fine. it a lot i i enjoy it it's stupid it's like it's it's dumb, yeah it's but certainly I, not i do like it because here's the thing the 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 new dune movies are really good uh, yeah like like some of the best science fiction we've seen on film in years like years right. and that's yeah. not an exaggeration and if you don't like them mm-hmm. shut up you know what I'm saying? Right. That's You're fine. Nerd, you know? But the general consensus is, and my consensus is, especially fantastic. after seeing part two, they're fantastic. Yeah, I saw part fantastic. one and I was like, all right, fine, whatever. This is weird, pretentious. And then I saw part two and I was like, yes, right. I get it. Okay, it was, this is great. Yeah. This is yeah, not great. that. No, this this is 1980s sci-fi schlock. With just enough weird David Lynch to make it stand out. And if, it doesn't need to be any more than that. If the new Dune movie is Star Wars, the first Star Wars movie, one okay. of the most influential right. sci-fi films of all time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is... Uh, this is the, the 2011 Star Trek movie. Mm. It's a weird... It's a weird version of the same genre. Right. Not nearly as good, not nearly as influential influential. Super fun though. Sure. Sure. I get that. Yeah. Does that does that reference make sense? Like this I, is J this yeah. is JJ Abrams is J. J. Star, J. J. Trek Abrams Star Trek to George Lucas's Star Wars. Like sure. Yeah, okay. You, you tracking? I'm I'm picking up what you're putting down. I'm seeing the vision, the focus. Do you have a better comparison? No. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, I, I wasn't critiquing. All right, you know. <laughs> no, it's yeah, just the okay. way you were saying it. it sounded very critique. Yeah, it's yeah. just, well, it's a strange thing to say. It is. A, I, yeah, I know it's a weird comparison. <laughs> um, and, but I, the thing is, as, as much as J.J. Abrams' Star Trek really isn't anything of note, I really like it, and same no, with this it's really movie. Fun. Yeah. I really like this because it is really fun, and it's weird, and there's not a ton of movies like it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like there is some generic, yeah. just just sci-fi schlock, but there's no other generic sci- sci-fi schlock directed by one of the weirdest, most outlandish directors in the world, based on one of the most famous sure. books ever written, right. starring Kyle MacLachlan that they've also remade twice since it came out. Like it's, it's, it is its own thing. And I like, I enjoy that thing. And I like the Dune story. I think the plot of Dune, Frank Herbert, though he has his problems, Frank Herbert was a really good author and he made a really good story and a really good world. And so it's worth like, Whatever version of that is made, I'm going to say this and I'm going to instantly regret it. Whatever okay. version of that story and world is made of Paul Atreides' story, whatever that looks oh, like, idea. it's going to be fairly enjoyable because it's an enjoyable story to begin with. Right. Because because the source material is so good and so interesting, even if it's not a perfect adaptation, it's still going to be 
good and interesting. Right. You can't really ruin Dune. Yeah, I get that. I get because that. Because Dune yeah. in its worst adaptation, and we just watched it. This is because right. I've seen the sci-fi series, and the sci-fi series is super accurate to the book, whatever. The sci-fi series, I will say, is a little more boring than this, but it's still mm. interesting. Regardless, the worst Dune adaptation is still at its heart and core Dune. And so right. there's going to be... And that's fun. It's a fun mm. world. It's a fun story. It's a fun character. Paul Atreides is a fun character to follow. Look, it's my planet. My Iraq is my Dune. You right. Know? Like, what right. more can you say? And this, it's Dune Desert Planet. Arrakis right. Dune Desert Arrakis Planet. Arrakis Dune Desert Planet. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Kyle M- 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 And so you take that, you take the fact that it's Dune, it's fun, it's whatever. It's made by this renowned weird director making a weird story, admittedly, but this renowned weird director who admittedly is weird for everybody. But but being being controlled enough to not make it too weird. He's on a leash. Whether whether that was he's on a leash, whether that was that was in the actual filmmaking or afterwards, whatever. It seems like most of that happened in the editing room. And I, once again, I think not once again, I haven't said this before. I think (laughs) you you, you thought it to narrate, you know, Um, I think most of David Lynch's weird stuff comes in the editing room. I think I've talked to Josh about this in the past. I think David Lynch's weirdness comes from the editing of his movies, not from the movies themselves from a, malignant brain tumor i think it probably comes from schizophrenia as well (laughs) yeah but no there's 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 the david lynch of it all Uh which this is my favorite kind of david lynch which is when which is why i like elephant man it's why i like uh maholland drive it's why i like the first season of twin peaks there's david lynch on a leash mixed with this is dune mixed with the the beautiful execution of the score the beautiful execution of the costume design the beautiful execution of the mm-hmm. set design like all of that stuff is done just the great, so the great well the whole aesthetic of this movie really is great just the general look and feel and sound is like everything about that is it's on it's the, locked in the thing holding this movie back is the fact that it was only one movie right or yeah. the fact that it was a it was a shortish movie sure yeah maybe maybe that's that's a th- fixed. could a three hour version hour of this movie, movie? yeah Who we knows? just chose not to I, watch that i version. won't find out probably ever but i might but probably not might. yeah who knows that's fine but no i i w- the the question is do you think this movie mm-hmm. holds up yes and no yes as as a as what it is as a, as a silly schlocky 80s david lynch sci-fi movie and this is I another mean, one probably, of those things i guess I mean, it was I'm last not a week nerd right so i can't really say this but i'm gonna anyways you know as a dune movie it holds up enough in that it tells the dune story you know? i was gonna say that i think this movie it's kind of like last week where I think this movie holds up better now than it did when it came out. Or maybe that was whatever I said that. Whatever um, that was, yeah. I think this movie, now that Dune has become kind of like a mainstream popular thing. Right, right. This movie is better knowing the Dune story than it is without it. Because without knowing right. anything about yes. Dune, you're going to be lost and bored the whole time. But if you know yeah, the story yeah. of Dune, at least at the very least, you've seen the two new movies. Mm-hmm. You're going to be engaged. You're going to be like, like legitimately, you're going to be engaged in the story. You're going to be able to follow along. Yeah. But if you don't know that, I think it could probably be a pretty challenging. No, story I think, I think this is, this is best. This movie is best viewed having seen the two new movies, maybe also while knowing the story of the book, which I mean, that's, just just which yeah you know watch the new movies whatever right this but, movie is best viewed when you get back home from the theater after seeing dune 2 and you're like i want right. to watch more dune like watch i want this. more dune. Put this on. watch this yeah um and then after but that watch maybe the have a couple series. drinks first 
Right. Sure. I guess. I can Definitely probably have a couple that. drinks first. Have a couple drinks, you know, hit your Delta 8 pen, whatever. Right. Whatever you do. But I do think this movie holds up. Maybe and drop I think some it, acid. I don't know. I think this movie holds up in a really weird way because it's a really weird movie, but it definitely mm. deserves, it deserves its place as a cult classic. Yeah, definitely. And it's one that I like. I will watch this movie again. And that's I the might I probably will like I don't I'm know sure I will there's something about I don't know this that I'll movie. ever watch the three hour long one but I might possibly I, I, yeah I can't say I won't you know I, I, can't no, I, I, I can tell I, I like this movie more than you oh well sure yeah but I'm more I of a David Lynch fan than you and I'm right. more of a Dune fan and more than of you. a Dune fan yeah right. so that of course um but yeah I think this is definitely something no, I'll come back was, to years it was later fine. it was very it was very fun a lot more fun than I expected if um, I'm doing I a wasn't Dune expecting binge, much from this right if I'm doing a Dune binge and I watch the both of the Dennis the Menace movies I'll probably mm. put this one on you know what I'm saying? Just because I want more Dune. Dune now are you two put, ends. Are you, putting this one, are you putting this one on before or after the sci-fi series? Uh, before the sci-fi series. Okay, all right, cool. Even though the sci-fi series is probably better than this. Yep, yep, yep. What I'm actually, here's what I'm probably doing. I'm probably doing okay. both of the Dennis the Menace movies. So here's the story sure. of Dune. And then I'm doing this story of Dune recap. And then I'm skipping the first sci-fi series and going straight to Children right. of Dune, the second sci-fi series. Sure, sure, sure. Um, but yeah, and then the last, the the we did all of our questions, so we're done. Uh, no, questions. would you recommend this movie? That's one of them. I would never recommend watching this movie alone if you're not a Dune I would or never, David Lynch fan. I wouldn't recommend watching it alone or sober unless, yeah, you're a dune or david lynch fan if you're a dune or david lynch fan i don't know why you haven't already seen this movie right i'm sure you have you probably have watch, which is why watch you're watching again. this yeah um, um if you're watch a, the watch the three hour long director's cut might, and might and well. let us know if, know if it's it, any better if it's worth it drop it in the comments we saw we saw Instagram drawings at the beginning we're like i'm not watching this. yeah i was out and also i found out it was three hours for right that. right we'd still be um, watching it that's not true we would but we would be probably we'd not still but be whatever doing this podcast um, yeah, and that's the problem so but no the the yeah. if you're a dune or david lynch fan and or you saw the two new movies and you're just like man i want to watch more dune right then i would recommend this movie it's mm -hmm. different and it's yeah. weird but it's fun weird and it's fun different yeah yeah that's and it. That's a semi-pro film thanks show. Thanks for watching. Uh, um, we've got a Patreon. We mentioned it earlier. Patreon. It's one dollar. It's literally only a uh, dollar. It'll make you holler. Dollar. That's it. it. I can't promise it'll make you. It made me I personally can. holler. I can promise it'll make um, me holler. Okay. See, I'm not putting my reputation on the line in saying that. If you don't holler, you don't come at if me. If you don't holler, that's on you, not on us. Yeah, I mean, I feel like Patreon one dollar guaranteed, guaranteed to make you holler. Right, it's I'm guaranteed. not guaranteeing that. Um, it's guaranteed holler. Yeah, thanks for watching. Get the, uh, we got hit the Patreon. That what else we got? Oh, Daniel, would you, um, would you like to let them know what film we're going to be checking out next week? Oh boy, do I know. Patrick we're gonna bust we're gonna bust Patrick Swayze. We're gonna bust Patrick Swayze or whatever. We're gonna bust movie ghost Bruce Willis from the end of Six Cents. Yeah. Ghostbusters. We're watching oh, Ghostbusters. Please. Yeah. Some of them. One of them. All of them, maybe. All of Who knows? them. Check back in later and send this podcast to me. If you can find Daniel's phone number, send him the podcast. Yeah. If you're Daniel's dad, thanks for being such a supporter of the show. <laughs> yeah, thanks for being a real one. You uh, a G. And, and hey, I appreciate you impregnating a woman to bring this man because I love him. <laughs> So thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see you next yeah, time. I appreciate that as well. We'll see you next time uh, on the next thanks episode. For thanking of us uh, on the, the next episode.
pro show on the next episode of semi pro ho show ho for show